Okay, you asked for it, you got it. Here are my reasons why I doubt we ever landed on the moon. Not saying we didn't land on the moon, I'm just saying here's why I doubt it. The U.S. is the only country in the world to successfully send men to the moon, and we did it six times. No other country in the world has ever done it. Winning the space race was huge for the United States in the middle of the mid-1960s because we were in a Cold War, we were in a very unpopular Vietnam War. The Russians were way ahead of us in the space race. They had the first successful space mission, the first monkey in space, the first man in space, the first satellite in space. We needed a win. Why haven't we gone back? Because we destroyed the technology, of course. Don't believe me? Check this out. I'd go to the moon in a nanosecond. Uh, the problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. Why? The problem is we don't have the technology to do that anymore. What happened? We used to, but we uh, destroyed that technology. We destroyed it. It's a painful process to build it back. No one's ever been past the Van Allen radiation bells. Don't believe me? Check this out. As we get further away from Earth, we'll pass through the Van Allen bells, an area of dangerous radiation. Radiation like this can harm the guidance systems, onboard computers, or other electronics on Orion. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. We must solve these challenges before we send people through this region of space. You have to admit, the lunar lander looks comical, like a beach tent with some HVAC parts attached to it. Here's Neil Armstrong making fun of it. You know, there's an old saying in aviation that if it looks good, it flies good. And this has to be the exception to the rule because it flew very well, but it is probably the ugliest flying machine that was ever been designed. On a couple of the Apollo missions, they actually filmed the lunar lander taking off from the moon. They had a tripod, they had a camera, and the camera would zoom in and turn as it flew away, controlled by somebody over 200,000 miles away in Texas. That's pretty cool, huh? Look at this, the tripod zooms back, follows it up into the sky, pretty amazing. Cameras only had film back then, so let's just say that you could control it from Texas. How'd they get the film? Here's a weird one. Supposedly on the moon, there's no atmosphere, there's no wind, no breeze, no air. Look at that flag just blowing in the wind. He can barely control it, it's blowing so much, just waving and waving, why? Here's a video of one of the Apollo rockets taking off from Earth. Look at the massive explosion, fire, and energy it takes to get that thing off the ground. Watch this, unbelievable power. Look at that, massive fire explosion. Destroys everything in its path, pretty much. Unbelievable. You would expect the lunar lander taking off from the moon would have equal power, or at least half the power of that massive explosion. But instead, there's a couple of sparks, a little bit of breeze. Watch this video, how they put the American flag up by tapping a pole down into the sand, and then they film the takeoff, and the takeoff power doesn't even blow the flag over. Watch him tapping that pole into the rock of the moon. It just tap, 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 little tap, 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 even left-handed. It just sinks down into the rock. Now watch this takeoff. The massive power. Oh, it doesn't even blow the flag over. Here it is in slow motion. Didn't require that much power. Neil Armstrong, the first man on the moon. You would think that would be a big deal and they would be equipped with all kind of photos. You know how many photos of Neil Armstrong there are on the moon? Two, greatest accomplishment in history. Two photos of him on the moon. And watch this interview. Any interview he ever had, he was extremely awkward and tried to tell us the truth. That July morning in 1969 when you came out and you gave that that thumbs up. I mean, that was a very confident view you put on. Yeah, it was a little bit of a sham, I admit. Uh, a sham? We, we were confident in uh, the equipment and, and uh, our, our own readiness to go, but you know, the but. reality is a lot of times you get up there and get in the cockpit and something goes wrong somewhere and you go back. Down. This is another funny one. Nixon's phone call to the moon. Okay, yeah, he didn't phone call landline to the moon. He called Houston, Texas and was tied into a radio that was communicating with the moon. 
but radio communications requires massive antennas on both sides. Where was the massive antenna on the moon, on the lunar module? That phone call took place June 20th, 1969 at 11.49 Eastern time. So universal time, this is the time it would be. Let's see where the moon is in relation to the earth, if that radio call was even possible. So it would have to be from the United States to the moon, a direct shot. So nothing was in the way, not the curve of the earth. But as you see in this video, the moon is behind the curve of the earth from where they made that call in Washington, D.C. and Houston, Texas. Follow me on this one. They say we weigh one-sixth what we weigh on Earth on the moon. So if I weighed 180 pounds and I've got a 180-pound spacesuit on, that's 360 pounds divided by six is 60 pounds. So if these spacemen in their suits were 60 pounds, like a 60-pound kid walking around, why would they look like this? I'm going to show you in slow motion the way NASA gave it to us, and then I'm going to show you in normal speed. Look how comical this is. Here it is in slow motion as NASA gave it to us. Kind of floaty. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. I wish I could be up there on the moon and bounce around like them. Look at them just practically floating. How many 60-pound kids on Earth walk around like that? I would say zero. 60 pounds is 60 pounds. You can almost see the harnesses holding them up and how they're having trouble walking with it and just stumbling over. Now look at it in normal speed and you'll see that it makes a little more sense. They're just running through the desert, it looks like. Not real floaty or nothing. They're just jumping up and down and look pretty normal to me. Now the falls looks like a harness. It's like a harness to me. Like they're holding them up and they're having trouble with it comical. 24 men have gone to the moon. 12 have actually walked on the moon, yet not one of them with all the footage, all the video, all the pictures, not one of them thought to look straight up at Earth and show the video or the picture of Earth directly overhead because we on Earth see the same side of the moon all the time. So Earth would be directly overhead from the moon all the time. Not one of them thought to turn the camera up and look at Earth. Pretty crazy, right? Not one of them caught pictures of the stars. They could tune the adjustments on the camera to see stars, but there's not one star ever shot from the moon with their footage. Why? This is the famous Earthrise shot from one of the Apollo flyby missions taken from the capsule itself on flyby. Very impressive, very nostalgic, unbelievable. Recently, Artemis Project sent Orion up to the moon to get beautiful shots of Earth. Comparative to this, it's like, okay, wow, we're gonna get so much better because we're so further along with technology. Here's the shot of Earth from Orion just a few months ago. There it is, there it is. Uh, what? And if that wasn't enough, here's one that has stumped me. There are three lunar rover vehicles left on the moon. And there are six sets of legs from the lunar module takeoff, they left the set of legs on the moon. Six sets of legs, three lunar rovers on the moon. All of our powerful telescopes on Earth, not one of them can get a shot of that stuff. We can see other galaxies from Earth with our powerful telescopes, yet not one telescope can see the stuff that was left over on the moon.